All right, before this video actually starts, I just want to say that I have left uh, timestamps in the description below. So um, the way I organized this video was uh, the first part is me going over how everything works in Photoshop and just how everything is laid out. And then the second part is where I actually get into editing everything and doing the render. So yeah, if you already know how to use Photoshop, um, then you can just skip ahead, uh, use the timestamp, and it will bring you to the part where I do all the editing and you can see what I do. So. Hopefully that helps some of you guys out, <laughs> and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hello everyone, my name is Feeble, and welcome to the second part of the render tutorial. Uh, this is going to be the Photoshop part, so uh, there's a lot to go over in this, so just kind of stick with me. Um, this might be a longer video just because of how much stuff there is to go over, uh, and uh, yeah. Alright, so first things first is you're going to want to get your... Uh, I guess your image that you want to start working on. So the way that you're going to do this is you're going to go to new uh, or file new or you just do control N and then you'll have uh, something like this. Now I'm using Photoshop uh, 2021 so um, it might look a little bit different depending on what version you're using um, but uh, you should probably most likely see like the width and the height right here. Uh, so just make sure that you see that. All right, so we have a couple things here to go over. Uh, first, we have the name of the project, so we can just call this, um, I don't know, uh, Renter Tutorial. Uh, so then, I guess that's that. <laughs> uh, for the width, what we're gonna be doing for this is a 1080p uh, image, so we're gonna do 1920 for the width, and then for the height, we're gonna do 1080. Um, and then you wanna make sure that it's always set in pixels. Uh, we're not gonna be using like inches, centimeters, all of this, uh, just pixels. It's just the easiest to work with, in my opinion, so I uh, shouldn't have an issue there. The resolution, this can honestly be, uh, I would say anything between 72 and uh, 300. Um, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, it's just if you were to print out whatever you're uh, making, it, you would want it to be a higher resolution uh, so that it can get all like the pixels and everything and all the colors. Um, but this doesn't really matter that much. Color mode, you want to set this to RGB color. Um, make sure that it isn't anything else, because I've had in the past, like I have would set it to grayscale on accident and wonder why no colors are showing up. So just make sure that it's on RGB color uh, and set it to 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit. It doesn't really matter. But for this, I'm going to be using 8-bit. Uh, background colors, um, you can set this to whatever you want. I typically go just to white, but uh, you can do transparent. Um, that would probably be the best. Uh, advanced options this doesn't really matter i don't really mess around with these um so yeah that's basically that and then you just click create and then it will create a new uh image all right so i'm gonna go over kind of the hot keys and um what everything does and what everything kind of how to use everything because i know when you when some people get into like photoshop it can be a little um a little intimidating because of how much stuff there is to actually like learn and to like uh, it's just a lot to take in so I'm just going to go over everything uh, left to right, and uh, hopefully this shouldn't be too stressful. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, starting at the top, you have like all of these, which uh, file, this is where you're going to probably, you're going to use this quite a bit um, for opening new images or making a new project, opening up other projects. Uh, typically, I don't really use bridge. Open as, that's just another opening. Uh, you can close it. I don't really use these that much, but can save as this is something that you're going to want to use a lot um and then place link uh place linked um some if it, you're in older versions it'll just say placed or place uh so that's how we're going to place images onto our uh canvas i guess <laughs> uh pretty much everything else you don't really need to use um it's just kind of other stuff that if you're really advanced in photoshop then uh, you might use but i don't use them so uh, yeah, edit. This is uh, where all like the editing stuff is. So, uh, brush presets, transform. You don't really need to use these because there's an easier way to uh, do this. Um, but yeah, you can rotate the image, uh, flip horizontal, flip vertical. Again, there's an easier way to do this, and I'll go over that when we um, actually do start doing stuff. Um, stroke, fill, all that stuff. Image. I don't really use this that often, but you can change the image sizes, uh, adjustments all of this, if you know what all these are, like uh, vibrance, human saturation, color balance. Um, if you have any experience with like a photo editing program, then uh, these should kind of be uh, somewhat familiar. 
layer. Um, this is just all your layer stuff, which your layers are located right here. Um, typically they're on the right side and you'll have like this kind of bar right here with like a little image type. I don't really go, I don't really use type that much. Um, select again, I don't really use this filter filter. I use quite a bit for blurring. Uh, and typically with blur, I only use a Gaussian blur, motion blur or radial blur, nothing really else. Um, but you can mess around with all of these and just see what they do. Uh, you have pixelate and everything. Um, all of these, you can mess around with all of these, uh, stylize, and I am starting to use oil paint a little bit more. Um, that's new with, uh, I think 2020, um, or 2018, I'm not sure. Uh, and then filter gallery, we're going to use filter gallery a little bit. So, um, just to, you need to have a project first, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, filter gallery is something that we're going to use. Liquify is something also that I use quite a bit, uh, for kind of moving stuff around and, giving it more of a flair to it, I guess. 3D, I don't really mess around with 3D. Um, then you got view, so this is just how everything is viewed, so you can go 100% view to 200%, uh, zoom in and out, uh, but you can also use like hotkeys right here, so um, typically what I do is I use hotkeys for everything, just because it's easier. Uh, window, this is only something I use if I'm going to be editing something, uh, so it's not something that I really use a whole lot, but if I'm setting up my layout, then I will use this. So uh, there's that. And then you got the help thing. Uh, again, I don't really use this, but um, yeah. All right. So up here, uh, this is where your tool, what tool you're using. So if you're like on a brush or something, uh, you'll have a bunch of different things right here. So these are all like the brush layouts and everything. Um, you could change like the size of the brush. Again, there's an easier way to do all this. Just uh, if you don't really want to use hotkeys or can't remember them, uh, it's up here. Again, you can change the mode too of what brush you're using. So uh, there's that opacity, flow, smoothing. Uh, and then you got like degrees right here. Um, this is the symmetry. So if you're to turn this on um, and do vertical, uh, you can set up a line of symmetry and then you can do some stuff like that. Uh, so kind of cool, I guess. All right, so right here, you're gonna notice this little thing right here. Uh, this is where your projects are. So if I were to create a new project, uh, you can see that it will create a new thing. So if we do something on this one, it, this one will not be affected. So uh, two different projects, and this is where your project windows are gonna be. All right, so now moving on to, I guess, the toolbar. Um, this is a very important thing. Uh, not that I really use it that much, just because I know my hotkeys and what I'm doing, but um, yeah, so uh, just, we're going to get familiar with this right now. All right, so this tool at the top, this is the move tool. Uh, shortcut is V. And this will just make it so you can move stuff around. So if we had, uh, for example, a new layer and we wanted to move like this blob around, you can go into your um, move tool and then you can move it around to wherever you want. Then we have our uh, box tool. And if you click and hold, it'll give you more options. Uh, so you have the elliptical tool, um, just a line tool, uh, vertical and horizontal. Uh, so this is just to make uh, boxes, I guess. And yeah, then you have your lasso tool. Uh, so you have polygonal lasso, you just have the normal one. And the normal one is just where you click and drag and you can just kind of make something. And then it will uh, create that shape in a dotted line. Um, so there's that. And then the polygonal one is where you have to click each time. And then I use this quite a bit to, uh, I don't know, get kind of like shadows or something. I don't Magic wand, this is uh, if you want to select something that all has the same color, kind of, and you want to, uh, I guess, click something and delete something, I don't know. I don't really use the crop tool that much, but, um, so, it's just to, like, kind of crop things into different uh, ways, but I don't really use that, so we're not going to really go over that. Frame tool, I really have no idea how, how this works, <laughs> um, so we're just going to not mess around with that eyedropper tool this is if you want to get like a certain color uh, so you can do this I don't really use this just because with the brush tool there's an easier way of doing it um, and again I'll make sure to go over everything when we're uh, kind of going along with the uh, render tutorial uh, the healing thing I don't know what this does to be honest I really have no idea <laughs> I think that's more for like actually editing photos and everything but that's not what we're here to do brush tool very important to what we're doing today. Um, this is just to create things and draw things and uh, all that stuff. Clone, I have no idea what this does. Um, I'm just gonna go over actually what I know what works instead of just saying that I don't know what this does. Um, 
eraser tool. This is obviously kind of what it intends. So if you have something and you want to uh, erase it, um, pretty easy. That's pretty self-explanatory. Gradient tool. This is if you want to uh, obviously do gradients or something. So uh, yeah, it's just an easy tool to use. Um, fun to mess around with, I guess. <laughs> Blur tool, this is not something I use, but um, I used to use it a little bit, and it's just to blur certain things. Um, again, not something I really use a whole lot, but uh, can use. you can use it if you want. Pen tool, um, I'm starting to use this a little bit more than the actual polygonal tool, um, just because it's easier to use, and I actually prefer using it, uh, just because you can curve shapes, or curve the line, and then make a straight line, um, and then you can uh, make selection. Uh, so it's just... I'm starting to prefer this uh, more than the actual polygon tool, um, but it's a, it's a pretty fun tool um, to mess around with, I guess. Uh, it takes a little bit of like understanding on how to use it, um, so yeah. And we're going to be going over how to use this, I'm going to be going over how to use this uh, for the glowing edges that a lot of you guys have requested me to do a tutorial on. So we'll get there when we get there, I guess. <laughs> Text tool, again, pretty self-explanatory. Create a box, uh, and then you can type. And then up here, you go to all your fonts. Um, and then you have like your pixel size, uh, your line spacing, or your line alignment, I guess. And then this is like where you can warp the text. Uh, so you can like change how much it's like warped or whatever. Um, and then you can make it 3D, but I don't really do that because I do all that in Cinema 4D. So uh, yeah. Pass selection. This is uh, for specifically for the um, uh, the pen tool. So if you were to create like a uh, shape and you wanted to select, I guess like this uh, thing right there, then you would go to this and you can specific or select a line. I guess. <laughs> Again, I'm not really familiar with that, but um, that's what that's used for. Then you have your shapes tool. Uh, this is just make shapes. Uh, so if you want to make like a a box or something, uh, you could do that, and then you can do some stuff like this, make it more round. I don't know. Just kind of easy stuff uh, that you can mess around with. And then right here, the, you have your colors. Um, I'm not sure, wait. Then right here, you have your colors. Uh, so if you click on one of the boxes, it will bring up a color. And then you can uh, just change it to what you want. Um, and then this little, like, kind of double-sided arrow, that'll flip the colors. So um, whatever's in front is obviously the dominant one. Uh, and then you have like this little black and white one right here. If you just click that, it'll reset it to black and white. So, uh, pretty easy. Um, I don't really use this a whole lot just because I use this. Um, but it's still helpful. <laughs> Alright, then coming over to the right side, you have a couple things that might be right here. Uh, if you don't, then uh, you can make a window and I'll just kind of go over this. Uh, so right here, this is the history. So this is every um, change you've made to your project every like brush thing, every delete, everything. It's just all right here. Uh, so with, I think 2018, uh, CC 2018, you would only be able to go back Control Z uh, once, but ever since then um, you can go back multiple times, but this is how you would use it uh, if you didn't have 2018. Uh, so yeah, there's that. All those other things I don't really use a whole lot. Um, maybe properties is a helpful thing. Uh, Brush layouts, that's something I use a lot. Um, gradients, uh, this is a plugin, that's not something I use though. Um, yeah, and then you have your color thing. Uh, this is just the standard one. I do have a uh, one I bought, uh, which is this one. Uh, it's the Colorus 2.5 color wheel, uh, and I really love this one. I'm just kind of, I kind of go back and forth between which one I, which one I like. Um, this one I'm not going to be using just for the sake of uh, you might not have it um, just because it does cost money. So, uh, yeah, but this is a really, I highly recommend this color wheel if you are a designer or something. Uh, super nice. All right, then we come down to our layers. This is uh, where all of our work is going to be stored, and I highly recommend that you, every change you make or every, like, thing you do, it's on a new layer so that you don't get, like, uh, confused on why something is connected to another layer. So... That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making uh, every like thing that we do is going to be on a new layer. So uh, just to kind of preface that, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So if there's anything I missed, I'm sure that I'll go over it in the video. Um, and I'm going to be going with through like the hotkeys like um, 
as I kind of go through the tutorial. So we kind of got the basics out. That was kind of a long introduction, but I'll make sure to put timestamps in the in the description and I'll try to get them right this time because I know I've never been right with timestamps. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of want to mention uh, a couple things before I actually get into editing the uh, render. So first being that I didn't go or I didn't use the uh, filter gallery like I said I was going to. Uh, this is not something I really use a whole lot, but it's something that I use um, every so often. So basically what the uh, filter gallery does, uh, I'll just kind of give you like a brief demonstration of it, I guess. Uh, so this isn't really like a good thing to go off of, but... Um, it'll just kind of change uh, the render or whatever you're doing and have some kind of, um, I guess, different texture. Uh, so if you want more like defined lines for the pixels on the render, uh, this is something, this is what I use. So I'm not, I can't tell you exactly what I use, probably ink outlines, and you can mess with the stroke length, uh, dark intensity, light intensity, all that stuff. So I just kind of want to make that clear what this does, if, if just so you guys uh might don't have to wonder what um, it does. Second thing I want to go over is that I didn't go over how to use the color picker uh, hotkey. So I'm just going to briefly go over that too. Uh, so let's just say we have like this color of red and then we have like a green over here. Uh, and since we're on the green right here and you want to get the red, uh, make sure that you're on the brush and then hold alt and left click onto it and you'll get like this kind of weird circle thing. And that will give you the uh, Picked color, and then you can go back and forth, um, and you can even kind of get like other pixels to like uh, something like that. Um, I guess this is since this is a transparent image, it's not going to really give you it, but uh, yeah. So that's how you use the color picker. And then I'm not sure if I went over it, but just I'm just going to go over it again if I did uh, to change the size or like the diameter. I guess is uh, pretty simple. Uh, so what you do is you make sure that you're on the brush, hold alt and right click and drag to the right and left to change that diameter and up and down will change the, um, the hardness. So just something to kind of keep in mind. And I'm not sure if I went over it, but, um, I might've, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy the tutorial. But yeah. So let's get on with the tutorial. All right. So the way that we're going to place the, uh, render on here is you're going to go to file and then place link. And then that's going to bring up your like uh, library and then you just find the file. All right. So now we have the render in here and we can move it around. Uh, and to actually place it, you're going to want to use this little like check mark. And then from there you can kind of do the same thing. So if you want to resize it and kind of move it around in a different way, what you do is you make sure that you're on the layer and do control T and then that'll bring up the uh, thing to resize and all of that. And then from there you can right click and go into like warp and you can do stuff like this. All right, so before we actually start editing on this uh, render, we need a background to kind of give us like, um, to kind of give us like a inspiration, I guess. So what I typically do is I use like, I'll go into Minecraft and just like uh, take a screenshot of a render or a screenshot of a background that I'm gonna use. And I already have one, so I'm just gonna pull that in. Um, so. The way you access your Minecraft folder, uh, if you don't know already, is you press, if you're on Windows, I'm not sure how to do it on Mac, but you press Windows key and R, and then you'll get this little run box, and then you want to type in percent out data percent, and then you want to press OK, and then you want to find dot .minecraft, it'll be at the top, and then you want to find screenshots, and then you have all of your screenshots in here. Alright, so I have a screenshot that I'm going to use right here, so I'm just going to drag that in. Alright, so you're going to notice that we have a little thing at the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're just going to resize this to fit the thing. And there we go. We got, we can also uh, tilt it a little bit. So if you hold control and click on these corners, you can kind of tilt it in a, in a way. Uh, so I think we'll kind of do something like that. All right. So now we have our uh, background in here. So what we're going to do now is you want to take it to the bottom of the render. So the render's on top and we can just kind of resize this and uh, put it into um, kind of what looks good. So uh, I'm just going to quickly do that um, just so that this tutorial isn't as long as I would probably make it. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so now we have the render in there, and what we're gonna do now is we are going to uh, zoom in. 
uh, so that we can see everything a little bit better. So the way that we're going to do this is by pressing control and then the plus next to the backspace. And then that'll just bring us in uh, the minus that'll bring us out. Uh, so we're going to be using these a lot to actually zoom in and zoom out. So and then you can use these little bars right here to move back and forth. Uh, or you can use scroll wheel to go up and down. I think and if you hold shift, <laughs> I'm pretty, I know control, control and uh, scroll wheel will also move it back and forth. And then normal scroll wheel will just use uh, up and down. So you can use that if you want. I'm not going to really do that just because I'm used to going down here and dragging. Uh, but yeah. All right. So we're going to kind of set up the uh, render a little bit. So we're going to add a couple effects onto it. So first thing you want to do is go over to the render. If you see this little uh, icon right here, which you most likely will, that means it's um, you need to rasterize it. So you just all you do is right click it and then go to uh, rasterize layer. So once you rasterize that, then you can make any changes onto it. So you can like draw on it or uh, whatever. So um, or you, what you can do is you'll get this little icon or like this little window over here and it'll just say um, the smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. All you have to do is just click OK and then it'll rasterize it automatically. Um, so whatever you want to do. All right. So what you're going to do now is you want to go to the uh, rent or the, uh, the render, I guess. And then we're going to go over to I forgot to mention these, um, but I'll kind of go along as or I'll kind of go over them as we go along. So. Uh, we're going to go to effects and we're going to go to gradient overlay. So this is where uh, you're going to get this box and this is kind of where you want to do all your effects. So for this, you want to set it to overlay and you can change the opacity depending on what you think looks good. And uh, for this, I'm going to set the gradient. Typically I'll do like the black and then uh, white, uh, but I might do a little bit of a lighter gray onto this just to kind of, have a light shadow onto it and you can also change the degree uh, so we kind of want it to match the sun so uh, the sun is kind of coming in this way I think um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> uh, so yeah so the sun's over here we want the beam of light to be going this way uh, so that's what we're gonna do and you can also change the scale um, so we're gonna do something like that there's a couple other things you can do in here you can add an inner glow if you want uh, make this uh, more of like a lighter color um, it's all dependent on what you kind of want to be honest um, I don't really typically add those but you can uh, drop shadow uh, we're not gonna do that um, yeah I think the only thing that I actually do is gradient overlay so uh, we're done with that Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add like, um, I guess a bit of more of uh, effects. So what you're going to do is you want to come down to this little icon next to the trash can and you want to, that'll create a new layer. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go to our brush tool by pressing B and we're going to set it to white and then to resize the uh, brush, what you want to do is you want to hold alt and uh, right click and drag and that will create a, um, once you can like create the diameter and then if you go up and down that'll change the hardness um so we're going to turn this down a little bit the hardness uh and we're going to go to right about there next thing that you want to do is you want to create a clipping mask for this layer so you want to hold alt and then you'll get this little icon right here you just do that or you can right click it and go to uh create clipping mask which i'm not sure where that is oh right here <laughs> so it'll be or I think it's called a layer mask actually I'm not all right so right here you can also right click it and go to create clipping mask that's another way to do it and that basically means that when we draw on it it'll only affect the render so we can even though we're drawing like over here it's still only affecting this part of the render or what's visible all right so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna kind of go over uh, actually I'm gonna turn the hardness down to zero and we're gonna create, or we're gonna go to a soft round brush. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of go in like the direction of like where the sun is facing, uh, just to kind of give it more of a glowing effect. Uh, and then we're gonna change the layer type to overlay, just so it kind of uh, you can see that it makes kind of a big difference. Um, 
and then you can also do change it to black and then you can kind of go down here do something like this or I don't know I'm not gonna really do that a whole lot but uh, you can if you want all right so the next thing is probably what most of you guys want to see which is uh, the glowing edges so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer go to the pen tool and you also want to find out which color you want to use so I think for this we'll kind of use a um, maybe like a light or not um, we'll do kind of like an orangish a little bit all right so what you're gonna want to do is when you have or go back to the brush actually uh, and you want to set your brush to hard pressure round um, it'll kind of look like this uh, <laughs> it's just very thick line um, and then you want to change the size to about like f you can I would say anywhere between like three and seven um, seven's a bit it's a bit rough uh, or big I guess um, so just yeah all right so to actually start doing this you just kind of want to take out your pen tool and just kind of go along the lines of um, wherever you want to actually create the glowing edges so once you have uh, something like this you want to right click and go to stroke path and then when you get this little like uh, window here you want to change it to make sure it's on brush because I think it by default will be set on pencil and you want to go to simulate pressure and then you can delete the path and you can see that that will create like a glowing edge so uh, you can do this kind of anywhere and I'm actually going to change this up to four just because it'll give us a bigger um, I guess uh, stroke path uh, so there you go that's how you do the glowing edges it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty simple uh, so I'm just gonna go around do a lot of these um, just do them wherever you want honestly it's doesn't really matter so I'll do them on the jacket um, the pants the uh, maybe even the sword a little bit the shoes uh, stuff like that so just something kind of like this uh, just anywhere you want um, that's kind of why Photoshop is so great is because you can do whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go around, add a bunch of glowing edges, and um, I will catch up with you guys when I'm done with that. Alright, so I've created a quite a few, <laughs> quite a bit of a lines so um basically once sh once you are done with this uh what i do is i will probably like mess around with like different types of uh like layer styles so i think that color dodge honestly works the best uh you can just kind of go through here and see which ones you like the most uh pin light looks pretty good uh linear light um but i like how color dodge kind of affects it so we're gonna do that and you can change the opacity right here. Uh, so if you want it kind of more faded or something, uh, you can do it right there. Uh, but I think I think uh, around 78 is good. Uh, and if you want to delete some, you just kind of go to the eraser and uh, kind of go through this. All right, so now that we have our uh, kind of lights and everything, what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding the shadows and make it look uh, more like it's in the environment. So what, there's a couple different ways you can do shadows. Uh, so what I typically do is I'll just create like a little um, kind of black spot uh, in the ground, I guess. So something like this and underneath the feet and the arms or whatever. Uh, you don't have to do this. This is just something I do. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of warp it to like this. And then you can kind of do something like this. I might make it a little bit bigger. Again, it's it's just kind of all figuring out what looks good and messing around with it. I'm not typically good with just making shadows. So I apologize if it doesn't look that good. Um, I'm, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to, um, now this isn't something that you, you're probably gonna do, but I'm just gonna kind of make the sword look like it's in the ground. Um, so what I'm gonna do for this is I'm actually gonna go to the polygon tool uh, and, or the lasso tool, 
And I'm going to do something like this. And then I'm going to go to the render and just delete this part. And then I'm going to uh, set this to a hard round uh, and delete that. So there we go. Now we kind of got the uh, sword in the ground. We might even warp it a little bit. Uh, make it match a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, here we go. So now the sword kind of looks like it's in the ground. Um, and you can even, if you're better than me, <laughs> you can add some effects to it, uh, which I probably should add. Uh, so I'm just going to add a little bit of a, and there we go. So I think it looks pretty good. looks decent. Um, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add like um, kind of more lights to the whole thing. So what I do is I just kind of come down in the direction of where the sun might be hitting, which I don't think it's hitting there. I think it's more like, uh, like this. So I just kind of do something like this again in the way that uh, the sun might be hitting it. Uh, so something like this. And of course, create a new layer. I'm gonna drag this one to the top and uh, I kind of want to have like a nice, like uh, pastel yellow kind of glow onto this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of do something like this. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to cut the whole thing right here along this edge uh, and then create like a shadow effect onto this. So we're gonna cut this just like that. And then what we can actually also do, uh, new layer, of course, and then go to black, and then kind of create like a shadow effect to it. Um, again, you don't have to do this. Uh, it's just uh, something I like to do. Um, so I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> and for this, I'm gonna use the blur. So go to blur, uh, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And we're just going to turn this up a bit so it kind of has that faded effect. And then, of course, turn down the opacity a little bit, make it blend in more. Um, and we're going to do the same for this light that we have. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see that it kind of creates like, or the outside isn't as sharp. Uh, so I'm going to go, I think, like right there. And we can just drag this too, because we want this to be a bigger area. And drag it up above this, just like that. And then uh, for this, you could do, uh, I didn't mean to do that. We could, I usually do overlay. And then uh, just drag down the opacity a little bit. And you can see how much that actually adds to the render itself. Um, so. Uh, yeah, at this point, I would probably be done with the render. Uh, you can, of course, add shadows if you want. So uh, if you had like if you wanted to create like a shadow on this arm, uh, what you would do is go to the polygon tool, uh, create a new layer, of course, because everything runs in new layers. <laughs> uh, and then you can do something like this. Uh, and then go to black and then you can kind of do something like this if you wanted to create like a shadow <coughs> on this arm and of course do a better job than I did but um, yeah and then kind of do that and then you kind of got like a shadow on that arm um, it doesn't look too bad so I think I'm gonna leave it <laughs> uh, so that's basically how I do my renders um, you can do some things with the eyes, like creating little lines in them uh, or brighten them up with like white or something. But I think this looks pretty good. Uh, so last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a, a, a Lightroom pack. So uh, file open and then I have a Lightroom. So uh, in here, I got a Photoshop and then I have a lot of things in here. I use Prez's, uh, his color correction pack. So... I just feel like it's the best and it adds so much like uh, color to uh, what we're doing. 
or what whatever render I'm doing, you kind of want to get a feel for how this is. So this is kind of like a warm feeling. So uh, you kind of want to just find a good Lightroom pack and just kind of experiment with all of these. Uh, so we're going to use this one and uh, not right there. There we go. Here's that. And then you can change the opacity on these. And then typically these will have like a bunch of things in them. Uh, change the opacity on those too if you want. And sometimes I'll even mix Lightrooms. Uh, so if we wanted something that was a little bit more uh, kind of have a different contrast to it, you can add that in and uh, turn down the opacity a bit on this uh, or even put it underneath um, something kind of like this. Um, that's how you do it. Um, that's how I do my Lightroom or my uh, renders effects and everything. Uh, so not typically a whole lot of like other packs using. It's just Lightroom packs. So uh, yeah, hopefully this guy this helped you guys out. Um, sorry this video took so long. I recorded it once and then it it just I messed up the whole recording with the uh, settings. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys did enjoy this and um, yeah, you guys learn something i'm hoping and i helped you guys out uh so yeah if i did make sure to drop a like and uh subscribe if you are new and i will see you guys later hopefully the next tutorial will be a uh, rigging tutorial part three i don't know <laughs> um that's a bit of a tricky one but uh yeah so that's it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys later peace